Session six of Who is in Charge, and this one I call Living Water. Now, deserts are dry places, but there are such things as oases, places where water is available. One such oasis in the desert that the Israelite people knew was called Ein Gedi. It's actually the place where David was hiding at one stage when Saul was out to kill him, and it's the place where he and his men were hiding in a cave and Saul came in to relieve himself and David crept up behind him and took a little bit of cloth off the corner of his cloak. That's another story. But this place has running spring, a beautiful spring of lovely clean water and it's out in the desert. A place of refreshing, a place to drink and be revived. Desert dwellers know where the oases are and they rely on them to live. The animals also know where the water is and they know where to find it. Life-giving water. And you could die of thirst either side of these oases if you didn't know they were there. Living water is used many times to refer to God. Living water sustains life and without it we're dead. Jeremiah 2.13 says, My people have committed two sins. They've forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns, that cannot hold water. The people of Israel had become so disobedient, they were worshipping other gods, they turned away from the water of life. The living water that gives life is God. One of the feasts that the Jewish folk used, still celebrate, actually, the Feast of Tabernacles. And by the time of Jesus, it was a feast that was celebrating God's goodness to them in the desert. And what they did was they would build a booth out of palm branches or other branches. And they had to sleep in it for seven days and eat their meals. That was the men had to do that. And so it was reminding them of God's protection, their time in the desert. It was also one of the pilgrim festivals where you were meant to go to Jerusalem. And each day of the festival, the priests would have a procession down to the pool of Siloam. They would collect a big thing of water and then they'd march back and the people would be waving the palm branches and, and celebrating, cheering them along. At the temple, the priests would walk around the altar and then they would tip water around the altar. And the symbolism was supposed to be that when the Messiah came, the whole earth would know the goodness of God like the waters cover the sea. And that's a verse from Isaiah 11, 9. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God like the waters cover the sea. And it was in the midst of that celebration, it was actually on the last day, it says Jesus got up and he shouted in a loud voice, come to me if anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And this really was a claim to be the Messiah, the source of living water. The desert represents times in our lives when going is tough. Looking around at the desert, it can look hopeless, but there are oases of living water. God is always there. He will provide the water we need. At one point, the Hebrews were camped at a place called Rephidim, and there was no water. And so they believed there was no hope. But God said to Moses, take your rod and strike the rock. And when he did, water came gushing out. God can provide even when we think it's impossible.